There's three elements in, in, in competitive gaming. There's the players, there's the production, and there's the casters. And a lot of people think like, you know, you could just commentate a game. If you know the game, you can commentate it. There's a difference between just being a guy who can talk about a video game and being a caster, being, right. a, being a guy who, who can entertain. Right. And I think that's more important than anything else, being able to entertain, just make people laugh, keep them engaged. And most importantly, you yourself have fun. That's super important. Do you have fun? I have fun all the time. I come from the Bronx and uh, out there, you know, gaming and all that stuff, it's not something that a lot of my friends growing up did. They, you know, a lot of times we go out, play basketball, right. hang out, and a lot of those kids like continue to hang outside and I kind of just stay committed to like video games. And my mom kind of viewed it as a, a good strategy to keep me in, in the house, right? Yeah. So while most parents were, you know, trying to, you know, keep their kids or keep their kids away from playing video games, my mother was trying to make me play games mm -hmm. to keep me indoors. So uh, as time went on, like, you know, a lot of my friends ended up kind of like uh, falling into bad mm -hmm. news, bad business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just kept on playing games, you know, and it was just something I really loved. You know, I, I was just like, you know, I'm a competitive guy. I need something to do. Let me go ahead and do this when I was in high school. But like football as well was like another thing that I was super into and passionate yeah. about. But I just couldn't quite cut it there. Because of that, I looked at where else I could put my, uh, I guess, my drive, my competitive edge into and that was, you know, competitive gaming. Then out of nowhere, it kind of just became like this Swiss Army knife of, you know, casting. I don't do this for the money, but I, I will tell you right now that it, it, it certainly has been a big help to myself and yeah. my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, my wife's a school teacher, mm -hmm. and I was working a dead-end job as a social worker. And don't get me wrong, love what I did, but, you know, love the people I worked with, but it just wasn't going to build up to anything else. I wanted to own something. Yeah. And then I created this business of casting. Yeah. You know, and then yeah. the Golden Boy brand was born. And then now I'm able to go to people and say, yeah, this is how much I charge and this is what I do and this is the services I'll bring. And yep. it's, it's just crazy to be able to negotiate that. When I first started doing this, I just thought, all right, whatever they give me, you know, it's perfectly fine right. by me. Now it's like gotten to that point where they're like, this is a business. What, what, this is what, what do you bring to the table? What right. do you charge? And the fact that people are asking me this question, now I can just go to my mom and be like, hey, you know, yeah. thanks for thanks for making me play Final Fantasy VII yeah. in my in my home the entire time. That saved my life because who yeah. knows where I'd be, uh, you know, in this day and time. Almost all the people I knew growing up are either dead or in jail, you know, yeah. and uh, and and yet somehow, some way, right, this kid from the Bronx is able to make his way out of there. It's a culture. It's yeah. a diverse culture that merges people together more so than anything else, more so than sports, more so than, uh, I mean, just any activity you could possibly think of. There's competitive gaming and then there's esports. We're all competitive gamers. If you get on and play a game, if you get on and play Call of Duty and you want to win, yeah. you're a competitor, man. Yeah. You are a competitive individual. But esports is like that other level, mm -hmm. right? Where you take it to, I'm playing at events like this, competing for thousands of dollars in cash, opportunities to go compete in China. There's now becoming like this clear, like differentiation between the two. There's competitive gaming, and now there's esports. It's becoming not to the point where people, like anybody can turn this into a job, but it's becoming a, a more uh, feasible, I guess, thing for like the top players. Yeah. As before, like, hey, I'm like the best in the world in Call of Duty. What's there for me to take from this? Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now there's opportunities for you. Video games are now just so easily accessible to anyone. You know, like anyone and everyone. Like my, my mother could play a game if she wanted to right now. That's how easy it is to get into. And I think the coolest part about all this is that when those people play like that Angry Birds or something like that, they're gonna want to challenge. Nine times out of 10, that person's gonna move on and want to do something else. Yeah. And then they're gonna want to do something else. And then eventually they'll all just fall into esports. There's no doubt in my mind, we'll fill out all of Staples Center. We'll sell out Madison Square Garden. And that's the thing, right? A lot of these guys, like a lot of these like famous personalities and all that, they're gamers too. So like they want to get involved. Even a kid from a ghetto can go and rise from being, you know, just a regular kid yeah. who's playing Sonic Pinball in his, yeah. in his home to casting events and entertaining thousands of people. Oh.